So you can see in this area where we've got uh, rapids, we're in the upper course of a river and where we get rapids, these are caused generally by a high amount of bed load. That means rocks at the bottom of the river. That then, when we've got a rock in the river, causes the water to flow over and downwards. We call that an eddy current. That downward motion means that we get hydraulic action or cavitation if we're in A level and that causes there to be a depression formed, a small hole. Once we've got a small hole, rocks carried in the river or transported by the river will get into it and they'll move around in it, eroding the river, creating a small pothole. As that continues, bigger rocks will move into the river, one such as this, and again, move around in a circular motion, drilling deeper and wider until we get something quite dramatic like this pothole in front of me. This is an example of a small depression in the riverbed, in the bedrock. And it's only the beginning of a pothole, but we can imagine if a rock fell in there, that that might spin around there with a gentle river current flowing above it. Obviously there's going to be uh, erosion. This rock's going to get smaller and eventually disappear, disintegrate. But in the process, this pothole's going to get larger. And we can see other evidence here of larger potholes. And there's a great example here, which actually has a rock in situ. And further behind me, there's another example that's much deeper and we can see actual rocks inside it. It's summer right now, so the flow of this river isn't particularly high. There's not much discharge if we're going to use a key term. But when this river increases in discharge going into winter, there's going to be a flow of water over this rock into this pothole so that these rocks are grinding around and around the bottom. How to draw a pothole? So first we need to draw a river profile, a cross section of it. Because we're in the upper course, we want to make it relatively steep. We need to have the channel bed slightly rough as well. So we, we might want to add an arrow for direction of flow. And then we need some kind of rock in there. And we would label that with bed load. So how a pothole is formed, that water flowing has to flow over the pothole. And then due to pressure differences, we probably don't need to go into those in much detail. If we're A level, we might want to say that it creates low pressure, that we get a downward current. And that current is called an eddy, a downward eddy current. So as a result, we get a small hole, or a better term would be a depression. And we, we might want to mention that's created by hydraulic action. Probably in an exam, you want to write that out rather than abbreviating it. And if we're A-level, we also should probably mention cavitation. The next step, we need to talk about the all-important abrasion. So again, we have our river profile, we have the direction of flow, but now our depression is a bit bigger. So we need to add in there some kind of rock. And because of that, it is moving around. It's spinning around in that pothole, making it deeper and wider. So we want to mention that there is erosion, but in particular, that type of erosion is abrasion. And over time, that would get deeper and wider. More rocks will get in it. We might also want to mention that how those rocks will move will be predominantly through traction. That's rolling and dragging. There might be some saltation as well, the idea of bouncing along within there, but we're mostly talking about traction and that key idea of abrasion.